Hey there, English Expanders, here I am again uh, with today's show, uh, which is about uh, how to talk about actually really anything without difficulties at the speaking test. Some people feel that uh, they black out, they are totally shocked when an examiner asks them a question and then they only answer with one sentence and that's it. Today we are going to talk about your strategy which will help you to become a more fluent, more experienced candidate at the speaking test, at any speaking test really. I will teach you how to answer some easy questions without any difficulty, with ease. Let me show you, no, please, oh no, um, please tell me if you're here, uh, like, comment, give me a heart <laughs> or a smiling face when you're here and uh, watching me. I can see there are some people uh, joining in and I'm waiting for the others to come too until they arrive. I will tell you who I am. My name is Agnes, Agnes Jubanoy. I'm an English teacher at Don't Panic Language School uh, near Budapest. I've been teaching English since 2003. I've learned to be an English teacher in, uh, in Budapest at university uh, where I was taught lots of methodology and since then I've had several classes mainly specialized in English, uh, who were really successful language learners, or who I think were became successful language learners. Um, I've been teaching, no, I was a secondary school teacher. I forget that I changed my job just uh, uh, last November. Uh, and then I became an academic manager at Don't Panic uh, English Language School where we have awesome classes at every level, where we teach you how you should really communicate. We are not filling out tasks. We are not matching words and grammar points, but we, what we only do there is speaking. Hi there, everybody. Uh, I hope more and more people will join in and, um, after my introduction, uh, let's tell you uh, the question of the day. I always have a question of the day, which you can answer in English, of course, in the comments below, and feel free to comment. Um, today's question is a bit, um, hmm, it will make you ashamed a little bit, but you know what? Face your fears, face your shames, and then they will somehow disappear. If you can laugh at yourself, then uh, all your problems can go away. So, uh, the question of today is, what was or has been the most embarrassing situation with English when you didn't know what to say or you said something that nobody understood or they misunderstood you or... Uh, or there was a huge misunderstanding and something completely different happened uh, from what you wanted. Uh, a most embarrassing situation with English means that a situation that makes you ashamed, that you feel sorry about because you made a mistake, that's an embarrassing situation. I will tell you my example, of course. Oh my God, I was so ashamed once what I did. Uh, <laughs> I was at a festival together with my uh, friend and um, it was in the morning, okay? I was tired, that's my only excuse, that I was so tired that I made a huge mistake. There was a good day, DJ playing, um, his, name, well, his name is Jamie Jones and uh, uh, while we were walking out of the festival, we met him and he was uh, coming down from stage and I, I just wanted to tell him that he was so good, his, his DJ set was so good that I enjoyed it very much. I wanted to tell him that you were awesome. If you're awesome, that means you're fantastic. Uh, and you know, at six o'clock uh, 
in the morning what I told him. I said, you were awful with a smiling face, you know? You were awful. That means you were horrible. I wanted to say you were awesome. And then he looked at me. Ah, uh, uh, really awful? And I said, oh my God, I'm so sorry about it. You were awesome. And then he laughed at me and <laughs> went away. That was the worst I've ever experienced with my English and, uh, and misusing this English, this beautiful English language. What about you? What embarrassing situations uh, have happened to you because somebody misunderstood you, because you didn't say the words correctly or you mispronounced something or you changed some words? Now I will, I'm going to find the comments because they are not very easy for me to find as you know me, right? Yes. Now I will uh, of course, I can hear myself. I'm an amateur. Uh, with this technology. Okay, uh, Gerge is here. Hi, Winder. <laughs> nice to have you here. And Timmy is here. Hello. Thank you for watching. And of course, my one and only Hoi Nalko. I'm so happy to have you here, even though the time of the show has changed. By the way, um, do you prefer uh, this uh, afternoon show or do you prefer uh, the early morning show? Tell me, please. Hi, Adrienne, nice to have you here. And please talk about your most embarrassing uh, situation in which you uh, were because of uh, English, because you misused a word in English or <laughs> a complete sentence. Now, um, are you afraid uh, of um, getting into a situation in a real exam situation where you feel that you can't say anything or you're too too stressed to talk about the question that the examiner asked you or or do you fear that you're going to black out uh, at the speaking test blackout means when you can't say a word you're just sitting there and doing nothing if you fear that if you have these fears type in yes we will understand you because we all we have all been in a situation like this before, believe me, many times, in Hungarian and also in English. But with a little practice and with a little time that you can uh, spend on this or, or deal with this, you can become a professional candidate at the speaking test. I will tell you some tips today which will help you become a more confident fluent user of uh, of English at the speaking test now um, now yes in the beginning of the speaking test sorry I'm using my cheat sheet I always have one for the show so uh, be, be no at the beginning of every speaking test you start with introducing yourself Sometimes uh, people let you, uh, sometimes the examiners let you talk in uh, longer, for longer minutes. Sometimes they stop you immediately. But if you're, if you're very confident in your introduction, then they will not have the chance to stop you. And um, that's why you should always prepare talking about yourself fluently. What does fluently mean? I mean... Talk about yourself for two minutes without stopping. <gasps> That's not very easy. What can you tell in two minutes about yourself? Now, um, uh, now I will tell you some examples about this. So um, you need to talk about topics for two or three minutes uh, that are connected to you. If you go to school, uh, then talk about which school you go to, which class, what are your favorite subjects, uh, what are you good at, what are you bad at, and uh, what do you like in your school. If you have a job, you need to talk about your workplace, how long you've been working there, uh, what about your working conditions, your working time, work time, um, um, what what do you like best in your job or what are your everyday tasks? Lots of things and we are only at your job. 
then uh, think about what you like doing in your free time. So from, from school to free time, from job to free time, jump to that topic. Um, now, a lot of people do this. That's a role play situation. Examiner asks you, what do you like doing in your free time? And then you sit there stressed out, sweating, um, don't know what to do because you haven't prepared too much. And then you say, I like reading. And that's it. There you stop. Okay. This is a starting point, which you should never do. All right. Prepare talking about your favorite hobbies or activities, like uh, reading. Boring. Sounds boring hobby. Sounds a boring hobby, but it's not boring if you talk about it with passion. <laughs> That's the key word. Talk about it with passion and then every boring topic can turn out to be exciting, right? Uh, for example, um, let me tell you my example, which I always quote, and maybe some of my students do, uh, know this by heart, but okay, another role play. What do you like doing in your free time? In my free time, I like reading fantasy books. It may sound boring, but reading these kinds of books takes me to another world. I can forget about my problems and keep laughing while reading Terry Pratchett's book. books. By the way, he's my favorite writer. I have all his novels on my bookshelf and I have some English versions as well. That's true. I usually start reading in the evening and sometimes I have to force myself to sleep four hours later. I can get lost in his books. See the difference? These are f three or four sentences that you can uh, practice in front of a mirror, that you can think about before the speaking test. You don't have to improvise. Prepare for this. This is why I helped you with the other topics, how to talk about your school and your workplace and uh, what to, well, how to talk about your free time activities. After work, how do you spend your free time? How do you spend your free time after uh, school or at the weekend? How do you relax? Uh, wh where do you like going? What do you like doing with your friends? You can all talk about this. Some people think they have nothing to say. But if you go into the little details, and I will tell you a pra uh, practical, some practical advice in two minutes. If you go into little details, you can go on for two or three minutes for, for a, about any topic, really. Right, right. If you have a pet, that's the next point. Talk about it. When did you get it? When did you buy it? Uh, what breed is it? For example, if it's a dog, uh, it's, a, it's not just a simple dog. It's a German Shepherd or uh, a Hungarian Vizsla or something like that. What do you like doing together with your pet? If you do nothing together because it's a snake, a pet snake or a hamster, then talk about the, the, the pet's everyday routine. It's so interesting that they may, the examiners may stop you, but then that's a common point that you can talk about. Uh, and of course, you, everybody has a, an interesting story about their pet. Okay, once it once uh, he escaped, or once uh, my hamster ate up the other hamster, or something like that, and a shocking, interesting story, right? Uh, and of course, you can always talk about learning English. That's a jolly joker topic. How long have you been learning English? Uh, when and where did you start learning English? Teachers? How many teachers have you got? In Hungary, we have lots of English teachers during our career, right? Uh, what do you want with the language? Why are you learning lang uh, English? What do you want with the language exam? Why do you like learning English? How do you like learning English? Eight different points that you can talk about only uh, about learning English. And then, of course, you can always talk about your future plans. Near future. Uh, higher education. What are your plans? What are your plans for the distant futures? Maybe you want to have a family, 
right? Or, or uh, you want to travel somewhere? Do you want to work somewhere? Do you want to change your job? Think about these topics. Can you talk about these topics without any difficulty? So school or work, free time, pet, learning English and your future plans. Can you talk about all these topics without difficulty? If yes, you are prepared for the first part of the speaking test. If no, then take a notebook and a pen or a pencil or take your laptop computer, whatever, and go into little details. Now, how can you do it? Before I tell you how to do that, let's look at the comments because I can see some comments are coming in. And Hoynaka sent, sent me a, a comment or sent us a comment. Regina is here. Hello, Regina. Nice to have you here. I hope you will come back to my English lessons soon. Right? And um, Hoynaka says, I usually don't have any idea to talk about certain topics. I know. I've been in your shoes. I get a shock and, and I say, I don't know. It's very embarrassing. I know. Uh, I try to cope with this problem, but I repeat this uh, again and again. I'm afraid that I won't be able to take the language exam because of this problem. But you always give me hope with your tips. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hoinaka. I will be here for you every single week. And you know where you can find me too. So, <laughs> Hoinaka, I won't let you stop. I won't let you stop where you are because you are, uh, you are on a good way to your goals and you don't know how much you developed or how much uh, your English language increased during the years. But I can say I was there in the beginning and I am here too now. Okay. Uh, hello, Sylvie. I can see you joined in. Uh, leave a comment or like or uh, smiley face, whatever you want, <laughs> just show me that you are here. And uh, Regina said she is coming back to my English lessons in the language school. I'm so happy for you. We were missing you so much. Right, uh, so let me give you my biggest secret, which uh, I've been thinking uh, for, for a few years now. And you know what? This is a strategy that nobody told me before. Uh, and this is what I think is the biggest secret to be, to be um, a fluent and confident examiner or candidate at, uh, not examiner, sorry, candidate at the language exam. And um, uh, how to talk about nothing in details. And Hoinaka, this is good. This goes for you. Tell your ideas to the examiner as if you were talking to a four-year-old little boy. How you talk to a four-year-old in simple sentences, but in all details. Because, believe me, this four-year-old little boy would ask you questions. If you don't explain your thoughts clearly and in a simple way, this four-year-old little chap will ask you why a thousand times. And this is why you should always keep in mind that if you are or when you are in a speaking test, you need to give reasons why you tell you like something or why you tell you do something. Remember my reading example? So I told you that uh, I like reading and that's not enough. Go into little details. If you talk to your four-year-old niece, uh, niece or nephew or son, you say, you know, darling, you can leave a darling in an exam situation, you know, this is the book I like reading, the writer of the books, my favorite writer is Terry Pratchett because he's, he wrote wonderful stories and I can get lost in his books. And you know what? You should also read this book when you get older. Or you know what? We can read that together. So you talk a lot about uh, one thing to a four-year-old little boy. All right? So at the exam, think about or look at the candidate and uh, the examiner as if he was a, a little boy who goes to nursery school or little girl if, if she's a girl. 
you need to be sure that a four-year-old would understand, would clearly understand your thoughts and it would be logical for, for him or her to, to follow your thoughts. So this is my biggest secret. If you want to have more secrets, then you should join my website uh, where I have a three-part video series which prepares you for the language exam for the speaking test, uh, three 20 minute videos, uh, which give you a lot of practical examples, strategies, tips, uh, experience from my experience. Um, they are in Hungarian, but I'm thinking about changing them to English. Maybe they are much better for you. Please leave a message here in the comments with your um, biggest, uh, no, the most embarrassing situation you were, you got in because of the English language, because somebody misunderstood you. And also visit my uh, website at EnglishExpander.net and you can read about my tips in Hungarian at blog.EnglishExpander.net and feel free to comment this video, watch my other episodes. I have already seven of them so <laughs> i will be here for you next week to answer your questions and by the way don't forget to ask me questions yes uh, hi Nalka. very welcome i will always be feel here for you to help you and uh, it was wonderful to have you all here i could see there were many of you i'm really happy about this and see you next week uh please in the comments, leave me messages about next week's topics if you're interested in something. If you're not, then I will think about something to talk about next week. Uh, hello, uh, goodbye, hello, no, not hello, goodbye, English Expanders. Have a wonderful weekend and week and see you in one week time in uh, on Saturday. Goodbye and have a nice evening.